Hello everybody, today I'm going to give you my top five side hustles for 2021. Back when I was in high school, these were some of my most successful side hustles, and now I'm giving them to you. These side hustles can make anywhere from $50 to $500 a day. In this video, I will go into depth on how to start each one of these side hustles, and also give you my secrets on how to be successful within these hustles. Let's get into the video. Side hustle number one is art flipping. A basic explanation of this hustle is that you buy a painting at a pretty good price off of a, like a website like Craigslist and then you flip it to a higher end buyer and make a profit. And don't worry, you do not have to be an art expert to do this. My favorite art marketplace is Craigslist. This is because all the art is local and you have much less competition going after these cheap paintings. Craigslist also allows you to learn how to flip art with very little consequences. For example, if you went to an auction and bought a painting for $800 because the auction house said it was valued at between $1,000 to $1,200, you'd probably be screwed. When it comes to higher end art, you really have to know your stuff, but when you're just doing it on Craigslist, you really don't have to know anything. On Craigslist, you can start small and then work your way up the ladder. The way that I flip art on Craigslist is I look within a 50 mile radius of myself and then I look up the keywords oil painting. Searching for oil paintings will filter out all of the watercolors and acrylics, which you really do not want. Now I look for oil paintings that are dirt cheap. You'd be surprised what some people will sell art for if they're moving or need to relocate quickly. I bought this painting behind me for $10 from a wealthy lady who lives about 20 minutes away from me. Right now, the value of this painting is about $200 to $220. That's about a $200 profit for an hour of work. The price range that I would recommend for you when you're first starting out is zero to $40. Obviously, if you see a good deal outside of that price range, do not hesitate to get it but I would recommend you learn a little bit about art first before you start making those more expensive deals. I find that this extremely cheap price range works really well when you're first starting because you can learn and not have that much downside for risk. So if you end up buying a painting for like 10, $20 and you can't sell it, you're out 10, 20 bucks. It's not the end of the world. When you're looking to buy a painting, you wanna make sure the painting has three things. The first one is size. The bigger the painting, the better. If a person is going to spend their hard earned cash on a painting that's from an unknown artist, then they're probably going to want a big painting. The second thing that you should look for is a frame. Framing something costs money, so paintings that are already framed are easier to sell. This does not mean if you see a painting without a frame that it is a bad deal, but most of the time you wanna look for paintings with frames. For example, if this painting behind me did not have a frame, I still would have purchased it because it still was a good deal at $10. Although because this painting has a frame, I can sell it for much more. Last but not least is the color. You wanna look for paintings with lots of color. Color brings out happy feelings within us and is more appealing to the eye. When a painting has vibrant colors, it is much more likely to sell fast and for more. So how much money can you make flipping paintings? The sky is really the limit, but let's say you found one deal every other day. If you are making $200 per deal, that comes out to about $100 a day for very little work. The only work that's required when flipping art is going to pick up the paintings, going to drop off paintings, and also listing the paintings on Craigslist. Speaking of listing the paintings on Craigslist, you want to make sure you take some nice photos. So if you don't have a DSLR, you can use your iPhone, but I would recommend that you use a DSLR. As you learn more about art, you can start participating in auctions and estate sales, and then climbing up the art ladder to get some really exclusive deals. Imagine buying a single Picasso every week and then flipping that for a profit. That has much higher margins than these like 10, $20 pieces of art. And the only resource that you need to scale is knowledge. So I would recommend if you're really trying to take this seriously, learn a little bit about art. Number four is starting an Instagram theme page. You know those Instagram pages that focus on one topic and post photos or videos about that topic? For example, do you follow any travel pages? Do you follow any skateboarding pages, whatever you're into, art pages. The people running those pages are just average human beings like you and me, and they're doing very little work and getting a massive audience. This is a great way to build a platform that can make you some side income whenever you need it. I have a theme page with around 48,000 followers, and having that audience allows me to post ads on there and make profits. The normal amount of money that I get for posting an ad is around $200 within the first day and maybe $50 in the second day. And I never post more than like one or two ads a month because I don't wanna flood my page with ads because I value my community. And if I've posted a bunch of ads, then I wouldn't get the same sales. But whenever I need the money, I can post that ad and then get 200 to $300. For some reason, people think that it is hard to grow on Instagram or any other social media for that matter. But honestly, it just comes down to consistency. To start an Instagram page, you will want to learn how to find good content, design a profile, grow your audience, 
and use hashtags. I have a whole video going over how to start an Instagram theme page. So if you're interested in that, then you can click the link right here. The link for that will also be down in the description. I usually spend about 15 minutes per day on my Instagram page. I post three times a day, so it's about five minutes each time I post. So that's really not much work at all. The benefit of this side hustle is that you can grow your own audience and that audience will care about what you have to say and what you have to sell. For example, when I post on my Instagram page, whatever I have to say will show up on 48,000 people's phones. Another great thing about having an Instagram page is it never really stops growing. Every single day I'm getting about 200 to 300 new people and it never really stops. It's kind of just an exponential growth up. Over time, your Instagram page could get really big and you could make a full-time living off of it. I know a couple people who have pages over like a million followers and they make a lot of money from that. But how do you make money on Instagram? Well, my favorite way is drop shipping. This is essentially where you build a website around the product that you want to sell. When somebody buys it, you buy that product from China but ship it directly to, your, their, to the customer's address and so you never actually come in contact with that product. Some other ways to make money on Instagram are selling ads, hosting giveaways, or selling e-products. For example, I am working on a new video where I try selling Lightroom presets on my Instagram page. So if you wanna see that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Overall, this can be a great hustle if you wanna do something that will not take up a lot of your time and give you some passive income that only takes about 15 minutes a day. Instagram pages take a little time to get going, but once you start it up, you'll have an asset that makes you money for life. All right, number three will not be for everybody, but if you're an animal lover, this can be a great side hustle to get into. And that is breeding snakes. So this guy right here is my banana inchy piebald. His name is Butters. And he is worth around, I'd say probably $1,000 now, now that he's gotten above 500 grams so he can breed to a female. So this is a pretty expensive little guy. I have around eight snakes and in total they're probably worth around five thousand dollars but the beauty of these snakes is that they can breed and each female that i have can produce anywhere from let's say four to twelve babies and each of those babies could be worth five hundred six hundred dollars that adds up all right butters come here let me get a better grip on you and so i breed ball pythons because for one they have the highest margins but also they're just so damn adorable. <laughs> I mean, look at this little dude. I'll, I'll put some B-roll shots of him, but I mean, these animals are just the friendliest animals around and they're literally like little puppy dogs. Like they're so cute. <laughs> One of the problems with this side hustle is that it takes a while to start up. And if you buy baby snakes, which are cheaper, they take around three years to mature. At least the females do. The males take only around one year. And so that's a long time to wait to make some to make any money. To start the side hustle, you also have to buy a bunch of equipment. Like for example, I had to buy some racks, which are just snake racks. They're like little drawers you put the snakes in and that's how you keep a lot of snakes. And those can run you anywhere from like $400 if you build them yourself, anywhere up to like $10,000 if you buy a bunch of professional racks. You also have to buy food for them, which can get pretty expensive. You can buy frozen rats in bulk, which is what I do or you could breed your own live rats, which I don't do because I don't know, it's, I don't, I don't wanna buy the setup for it. And that runs me, I'd say around $100 every, every couple months, so maybe every four months, I have to spend about $100 on food for these guys, which isn't too bad. And the, the benefits will outweigh the negatives in the cost over the long run. So when getting into this side hustle, you have to learn a little bit about genetics. You have to learn dominant recessive genes, the stuff you did in high school biology. Pythons are a weird species because they're one of the only species, if not the only species, where you can reverse the genes. So for example, this guy has three genes. If I bred him to a no gene animal, I could separate out all three of those genes into three separate snakes and then breed those genes within each other to make what I want to make. So it's kind of like you're painting on a canvas but it's a live animal. And so this guy's breed is a banana inchy pie, like I said. The banana is what makes him yellow. The inchy kind of reduces his pattern. The inchy's a little hard to see, but um, once you learn a little bit about snakes, you'll, you'll come to recognize these things. And the pied is also known as piebald, which means that he has he has a bunch of white on him, and so his pattern's kind of broken up by all this white. The inchy and the banana are co-dominant genes, which means that they will show up with a heterozygous. 
so R, big R, little r. And the piebald gene is a recessive gene, so that is little r, little r, which means that it's harder to get. And so that's what really gives this guy his value. He's worth around $1,000, but if I didn't have this piebald in there, he'd probably be worth around $300. This side hustle is definitely not glamorous, and you will have to pick up pee and poo pretty much on the weekly, but it can be really rewarding, and you really get to design kind of your ideal animal. It's kind of like build, like build a bear but like with a live snake, so it's pretty cool. These guys are such cool little creatures and they are a load of fun to have around the house and just pick up whenever you want. One of my favorite people on YouTube who taught me how to start breeding is named Chris Hardwick, so I'll link his channel down below as well. All right, Butters looks ready to go back, so I'm gonna go ahead and put him back in his cage and we'll move on to number two. Number two is credit card churning, and this is also one that I still do to this day. Credit card churning has allowed me to get free flights, get free hotels, and get free food. Sounds too good to be true, right? It's not. Most credit cards offer a sign-up bonus when you sign up for their credit card, and this can be in the form of points, miles, or dollars. Now, some of these cards offer kind of a eh sign-up bonus, but a lot of the cards offer some really good sign-up bonuses. For example, this credit card is the Chase Sapphire Preferred, which I got 80,000 points for signing up for. Those 80,000 points are worth around $1,000 when redeeming it for travel, and around $800 when redeeming it just for cash. This means just by opening this credit card, I can take six one-way flights to Mexico. That is literally insane. Now to get these points, there is usually some spending requirement. I think mine was I had to spend $4,000 in the first three months to get my 80,000 points. This seems like a lot of money to spend, especially for me because I'm a teenager, so my expenses are so low, but all I had to do is put my card on for my parents' groceries and that covered the entire 4,000. Each, each time they would buy groceries, they would simply just pay me back afterward, but they'd put it on my card. Getting that sign-up bonus is a great way to make some extra cash or just travel for free. My top three cards that I would recommend are the Delta Sky Miles Gold American Express card, Chase Freedom Unlimited and the Chase Sapphire Preferred. Right now I have the Chase Sapphire Preferred and they have a limited offer right now where they're allowing you to get 80,000 points when you sign up and where it's usually 60,000. So I will leave a link to that down below and by using that link it supports me and the channel at no extra cost to you. That 80,000 points is worth around $1,000 in free travel. But Lyndon, I've never opened a credit card. Can I still do this? If you have never opened a credit card before or have no credit history, I recommend you go with one of the beginner cards. I have made a whole video on which cards are the best cards for starting out with building your credit, and I will link my favorite one down below, which is the Discover It Secured card. I think you get about 50 bucks for signing up for that, and I get around $50 as well, so it's a win-win. These beginner cards do not have as much as a bonus as these advanced cards, but you will start working your way up the credit card ladder to where you can get to these medium to high bonuses. All right, now let's get into number one couch flipping. Couch flipping is an extremely underrated way to make some extra money. The idea is simple. You look for a couch that's hopefully a sectional couch between zero to $200. You buy that couch, put it in a storage locker, and then list the couch with better photos. You kind of clean it up, list it back on Craigslist. Then you sell it for a $200, $300, $400 profit, whatever you can get. This side hustle by far has the best potential profits on this list. If you do couch flipping full time, you could potentially make six figures a year. The main issues with starting this side hustle is that it takes a lot of work and you also need a vehicle that can transport couches to and from destinations. If you do not have a vehicle like a pickup truck or a van, you can rent a U-Haul for around $20 a day and the couches will pay for that U-Haul many times over as well as the storage locker, which you can rent for about 100 bucks a month. I have personally never tried this side hustle, but Parker Thompson has a great set of YouTube videos that will teach you how to do this step by step. I definitely will try this out at some point because there is so much potential in it. So if you wanna see that video be made, then go ahead and leave a comment or leave a like on this video. Overall, this is a fantastic side hustle if you are driven and do not mind working hard. Thank you everybody so much for watching. I really hope this video brought you some value and taught you something new about making money. On this channel, I talk about how to make and save money. So if that sounds interesting to you, then I recommend you follow along with the channel by subscribing. If you have any questions about anything in this video, do not hesitate to ask and I will answer them in the comments below. Thank you all and have a great day.